Hey y'all. It's been a while since I've put anything out on, uh, on my channel here. Uh, but as I'm writing in my diary, I thought this is pretty interesting and I'll share this with you. So what I'm working on here is, uh, I just switched over from doing a bunch of sugar mashes, sugar shines, uh, through the summer. And now I'm switching to all grain, which I like to run in the winter. I think it runs better. Um, but what I'm running here is um, about two thirds of uh, peated uh, single malt barley, peated barley, and about a third of some uh, wheat that I got from, uh, where's it at? Ba boom, ba boom, boom, boom. Steaky Creek Heritage Malt, John Miller. All right, um, Distilling Institute, a lot of good advice from him. Um, and so this is where I'm at two years into watching these guys, okay? So this is my grain bill, and this is my um, my mash-in sheet, I guess I'll say, on the 21st. 25, 12 gallons of water, 35 pounds of grain in total, uh, but actually it turned out to be about 34. I got 25 pounds of a peated barley, and then 10 pounds of a smoked winter wheat that I got from Steaky Creek, uh, heritage malt and you can find that on um, John Miller's channel on the YouTube excellent excellent uh, craft grain right there um, I hit all my temperatures I did use a, a brew in a bag just because it makes it much easier to um, get all the water out I can twist it up and I can purge that water and, and it makes I get a better yield out of it my original gravity that I started was 1078 uh, and I just checked it this morning and I'm at uh, 1008. So I'm going to do a stripping run. I used M1 yeast this time. It's a little different for me. I've never used this. Uh, still it. Still it. Jesse turned me on to this one. Okay. So this is an ode to Jesse and uh, Alan and John. Okay. This is where you guys have put me at two years in. Um, what I'm running here is a 10 gallon Alembic. Right. I've got about four gallons in there of this beautiful grain mash. I got another four gallons here. Um, and this is my mash. I did throw, uh, two good handfuls of raisins in there. Um, yeah. So I had an explosion. What, what, what caused me to want to do this, this video here is I had an explosion of damn fruit flies. And what I didn't realize was, and I should have, but Hey, learning curve, right? My, so my mash came up to here. It's a 15 gallon pot. I had about 12 gallons in it, like I said, plus room for, you know, plus grain fills it up. Um, and damn, look how much it, it, it foamed up. Just blew right out the sides, right over, you know, um, there's, there's my lid. And then the next thing you know, shit, I had fruit flies freaking everywhere, like insane. So that's my project today is to seal this out, uh, get rid of my fruit flies, I'll make another mash just like this. I'll follow this recipe and I'll do this four times and then I'll run a stripping run. I mean a spirit run and that, and that's what I do Four four mashes, uh, and then a, a spirit run. And it usually comes out really nice. Anyway, I thought I'd share my fruit, fruit fly story with you. Thanks guys. Peace out. Yeah. Damn fruit flies. I mean, hell, I'm going to have to clear this whole thing out and just clean everything. Like there's, there's residual wash all up in here. This was a project earlier that I repurposed my wood for, but anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to clean everything out and that's how it goes, you know, hell, but it made me realize, uh, I better do a little something for my mash here. And so what I've got is, uh, some uns unsalted butter in my eight gallons of mash. Yes, sir, just like that. And I don't know how much to use or how much not to use, so I just throw a big dollop of it in there. And that seems to work pretty good. And that's gonna control any foam up that I may have. So that's, that's eight gallons to that line. It's about right here about here on my pot. So that gives him plenty of headspace um, so that I don't puke, right? And so a little process video here. This is about when I would put my cap on. 
the, uh, the temperature inside has just reached about 138, 140, and I'm gonna put the cap on and then turn my heat down. But uh, I, I wait till there's a little bit of, you know, methanol steam coming off of there is what I believe is happening. Um, so there's that. Okay, while we're on the subject of gnats, here's the other big problem I have. And for me, this is a bigger problem because I just don't know what to do here. I'll take any advice, but I've got casks. And like this one here, um, this one here, and this little one had uh, either Madeira or Marsala in it. And they kind of, as I was getting them ready to put my spirit in, uh, water testing them and all, you know, some of that pushed out. And the gnats love that shit. So now I've got gnats on my barrels, which I don't like at all. So Yeah, I don't want to... I don't, I don't want to wash them off. Like, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Uh, I don't know why it wouldn't be, but they're sealed up fairly well. A lot of what you see is where I put wax on, um, barrel wax. Now, this obviously isn't, but you can see I've, uh, all of that. And um, But anyway. Okay. So we're up and running here. I haven't puked yet, um, but you know, let me see if I can hit that. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, so I got her all set up here. We're ready to go. A little, couple heat shields here just to, to block the heat from my, my, uh, my pot. Well, thanks for listening to my ramblings. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, and I really do appreciate the guys that I'm watching on that are putting stuff out here. Um, one piece at a time distilling, uh, John Miller and Steaky Creek. Um, still it highly spirited um, Randy all you guys um, thank you this is where you got me in about two years in um, and I should have known about you know my little episode and now I've got gnats but this is one of those things you know you write it down you keep going I will say that uh, keeping notes has helped me an awful lot um, and and reading stuff and listening to you guys um, this was a great little book right here, One Piece at a Time Distilling Institute. Um, there's some great knowledge and some really good recipes in there. Um, really good recipes. I've run a couple of them and they're fabulous. So anyway, if you guys can help me with my barrels, I appreciate it. If you guys want to chip in, chime in, just leave some comments and I appreciate it. Thanks guys. Peace out and happy distilling.